Hello and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to fix a bad track in DaVinci Resolve and I'm going to be showing you how to make your tracks easier for Resolve to process so that you get more accurate and efficient tracks in the future. If you're new around here, my name is Garrett Harding and I make videos right here on YouTube about how to use DaVinci Resolve and all the tools that it offers you. I post every Thursday at 6 a.m. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and let's jump into the video. All right, so here we are inside of Resolve. I've already popped the clip that we're going to be using into our timeline. This is some free footage I got from pexels.com of a person just sliding a vase with a note card on it into the frame. What we're gonna do is start where that comes onto the screen and we're just gonna give our stuff a little bit of a weak tracking point. So we're gonna try to track this white card even though there's a white background there. So we're going to go ahead and hit shift spacebar and then we're going to type in planar because we want to use the planar tracker. So we're going to go ahead and add and then we're going to hold shift while we drag this into this line so that it pops right in there. And then we're going to go ahead and switch this over to point area. Actually let's do point so we can get a little bit of a harder track here. Okay so we're going to be tracking that. So let's go ahead and set our track point and then play it forward. You can see it's freaking out quite a bit, but it's sticking with it for the most part. All right, we'll call that good enough. We'll just work with that little space there. So if we now go ahead and create a planar transform so that we can move things with this and we take some text and we put track and then we link that through our planar transform into a merge that's going in here, we should be able to see our text right there. We'll go ahead and move that right there and we will make it black. Okay, so now if you watch this, see the text is freaking out going all over the place that's not what we want so in order to fix that we're gonna go back into our planar tracker we're gonna put it back in this line we're gonna delete this planar transform because it's bad we don't want to use that one so we're gonna reset this so hit this X and then delete it go to where we're starting set mm-hmm and then we're gonna take all these points right here and we're gonna delete them. And this time, instead of perspective, we're gonna go with translation, rotation, and scale. And then we're gonna do about the same thing and see what happens. So we have our point set right there and then we are going to track to end. You see it sticks with it a little bit better this time and it doesn't change shape quite so much. So go ahead and stop that track now if we use this planar tracker to create a planar transform we should get a little bit better results already so if we go to the beginning there and track it with it you can see that it's staying on the notepad this time but it's still looking a little bit crazy so something you can do if you have a bad track like this is maybe select a larger tracking area so that's the first thing we're going to try here we're going to delete this planar transform and we're going to go back into our tracker and we are going to go ahead and delete all of these again and then we're going to get a larger area to track just like that so DaVinci has more data we're actually going to bring this one down so that it's all contained in the note card there and the vase and since we're at 32 and our reference time is 32 we're good to go we just make a new one and you see that that sticks with it much better than it was before so we'll pause that come back here Go ahead and create a new planar transform. Link that in, go into the merge. And now if we hit play, that's looking much nicer already. So that is one of the tactics that you can use to creating a better track is to give it a larger area to look at while it's tracking. So in my demon eyes video from last week, if you're just tracking the eye, it might be a better idea to track like the whole half of the face 
because then it has the eyebrow, maybe things going on in the chin, the side of the nose, it has all sorts of things to base that track off of that aren't necessarily changing shape or like moving around like crazy, and they're gonna move with the eye. So if my hairline moves to the right, so is my eye. That's, those are static, they're gonna be like that always. So if it has more data to pull from, it's easier for it to get a better track. So that's one way you can do it. Another way is if we pop into this planar tracker and go to point area. This I normally have better results with anyway than just using point. I almost always use point area. So we're gonna go ahead and keep it on translation, rotation, and scale because the perspective here isn't changing. You don't wanna tell it that the perspective is changing if it isn't. So generally your motion types, I'm gonna normally stick translation, rotation, and scale other than some very specific use cases, I might switch it over to perspective, but I almost always keep this translation, rotation, scale. So one thing we can do is change the track channel. So this is the color channel that the track is pulling data from. So if we have the red channel that we're tracking from, it's going to primarily take reds into account while it's tracking. And sometimes your different channels here will have better contrast, so it'll be easier for the tracker to pick those things up. So just for an example, we'll go ahead and do red, even though in this one there isn't much color happening, but we're gonna go ahead and try to get that like this, because this has some red in it for sure. So we're gonna go back to the beginning, and we are going to track this forward now. So it's not tracking Luma anymore, and Luma is gonna be differences between light and shadow. So as you can see, it didn't see any red there or not enough contrast in the reds to track anything. So that's not gonna work for you. But if you're having trouble, definitely go through and see if any of these are going to work better than other ones for you, because that could be your whole problem solved. For our best track here, I think what we're gonna need to do is get rid of these, like we had, and we're gonna skip forward a bit here, and we're gonna start our track at a different spot. So I'm just gonna track this clip, since it is always gonna be static against the things that are behind it, against the note card. So we're gonna go ahead and track backwards this time. So we're gonna set a new reference point. This is fine, it's just gonna change what we just changed. So starting at 57, and we're gonna track backwards, and then it's going to go until that leaves the screen just like that. So just a few frames there, but then if we go back to 57, we can track forward from this point, and then you see it sticks with it. So now we have a full track for the entire duration that that thing is on the screen. So if we track our text to that now, we'll go ahead and create a new planar transform. We're gonna run our text into our planar transform and then that into our merge, just like before. And then if we hit play, that's looking like the best track we've had yet. So you really wanna make sure that you're giving it enough data to make an accurate track. And if you do have a bad track, try to retrack it in a way that's going to give you a better track. So play with these settings, definitely play with your track channel, make sure you have a good selection, and t unless you need it, Try to stay away from perspective because it's going to give you some wonky results sometimes that are not desirable. So try to stick with this TRS right here. And then make sure you're using hybrid point area because that is a little bit easier, at least in my experience, to work with than just point. And you're going to want to make sure that you're on whatever one of these track channels gives you your best track. So in this case, we're using Luma. We're tracking a very high contrast area with this clip against the note, against these leaves, and against the background, so it can see that movement very easily. So if you follow all of those steps and you get those tips down and you play with your settings in there and you just tweak little things here and there and try to get it to a point where you get a better track than you were getting before, you should see some serious improvements in your results in not too much time. You might have to get a couple different tracks and figure out what's working best for you, but take the time to get it dialed in because it'll be worth it in the end. That does it for today's video. I hope you guys learned a lot from this one. Um, if you did, please let me know in the comments down below. If you didn't, also, please let me know what you're still struggling with in the comments down below because I would love to help you out. So that does it for this one. I'll see you guys next Thursday.